Before we begin, one of the first things we'll want to do is we'll want to make sure that we have an NSSC-backed resource pool available to deploy the PBDC. In our particular case, I've already done much of this work ahead of time to ensure that we have the resources available. So as you can see here, I have an NSXT-backed cluster already provisioned, as well as a T0 gateway, which we'll use as our external network um, in replace of a VLAN that we would typically use in NSXV. Now that this has been completed, the first thing we we'll want to do is we'll want to go back into vCloud Director and we'll want to register our NSXT manager. To do this, we'll go to vCR Resources, NSXT Managers, and we'll add a new NSXT manager. Now that this is complete, the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to create our network pool. For provider type, we'll select Geneve backed. We'll select our NSXT manager. Select our overlay transport zone. And click finish. Now that the network pool is defined, the other thing we'll want to do is we'll want to select or define our external network, which is our T0 router. So to do this, we'll go under external networks. We'll create a new external network. And for backing type, Instead of vSphere resources, we'll go into NSXT resources. We'll select our NSXT manager. We'll select our T0 router that was created ahead of time. The final step is actually to create the PVDC. To do this, we'll go into provider v PVDCs. Since our vCenter has uh, multiple clusters in it, we want to ensure that we select the proper resource pool. So in this particular case, we want to ensure we select the NSXT-backed cluster. For the network type, we need to select NSXT Manager and Geneve Network Pool, the NSXT Manager, and ensure we select the, the proper network pool, which is the Geneve-backed network pool. Now that the creation of the NSXT back provider VDC is complete, the next thing we want to do is we want to create our org VDC and map it back to our uh, NSXT back provider VDC. Once the org VDC has been created, the couple additional steps we'll want to do is we'll want to um, configure our gateway, provision our gateway and configure it. As you can see here, I have created a NAT rule that um, translates everything to our external IP address along with an internal network, um, along with the associated DHCP, DHCP pool. The final step is to provision a VM, which we've already done. And we will log into the console. And test our network connectivity. And as you can see, the IP address that's been provisioned is 192.168.0.129, which also is consistent with the DHCP, with the network and DHCP pool recreated.